Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast. Archery Tournament Western Armenia Cup 2023. On the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, children of Western Armenia, Yelya Keshishyan, sanctions should be applied to senior Azerbaijani officials, U.S. Senate Committee Statement. LRA, Iran and India work on the Persian Gulf Black Sea International Transport Corridor Project. The collection of the Shushi Carpet Museum in the courtyard of the Moscow cinema. The book Hayot Kashatar was published. On May 13 and 14, 2023, the annual Archery Tournament Western Armenia Cup 2023 will take place. The tournament will be held in Yerevan on the initiative of the Honorary Consul of Western Armenia in Los Angeles, head of the Archery Federation, Arman Grigorian, and under the high patronage of the President of Western Armenia, Armen Agabrahamian. In the tournament, young boys and girls from 10 to 18 years old from Yerevan and Adjazan region will participate. The total number of athletes is 18. Three prizes are calculated. On the first day of the archery tournament, there will be an opening ceremony with speeches by President of Western Armenia, Armen Agabrahamian, and Arman Grigorian, Honorary Consul of Western Armenia in Los Angeles and head of the Archery Federation. Archery school students will be among the guests. Admission is free. Address Yerevan, 40 Shirak Street. Tournament begins at 10 o'clock. The Western Armenia TV channel will announce the results of the tournament in the next broadcast. Good luck to everyone and have a good game. In his memoirs, Abdul Hamid referred to the rampant censorship during his administration. Sometimes people sent to Europe bring with them harmful ideas to Turkey, try to show the advantage of European civilization. I cannot judge them for their bad lives, but I have a duty to prevent them from being passed on the others. Some of the young people sent to Europe after learning about the French Revolution in France incited people to riot, considering it patriotism. Of course, I can't afford it. And they like the enemies of my country call me Red Sultan. This is where the censorship worked and I only prohibit the publication of materials with such content and in the field of science I even promote and thank you on behalf of the state. In reality, however, it is an undeniable fact that the bloody Sultan brutally persecuted the press. During his reign, many newspapers were closed and the few that were published were intending to glorify his personality, domestic and foreign policies. Schools were placed under strict control. The teaching of Armenian history and geography was banned throughout Constantinople. Books on the subjects were confiscated and burned, and teachers and authors were punished as criminals. In his memoir, Abdul Hamid referred to the fact that the Armenian issue was constantly circulating in European newspapers, where the public was directed against him and he was called the Red Sultan. And in the section called Red Animal of the memoir, he wrote that this was the first time the French philosopher and literary figure Pierre Kiarwin, a 1893, coming to Constantinople, he sowed evil and division in Armenian schools. In 1893 to 1896, Kiar, who worked in Constantinople, was one of the few French contemporaries who had been in the Ottoman Empire and the beginning of the massacre of Armenians in Western Armenia. Here he was invited to work in one of the Armenian schools of Bera to teach French and Latin. The growth of Kiara's interest in the fate of the Armenian people was greatly contributed by the events of 1894. Began his friendly relationship and close cooperation with Arshak Chopanyan. Kiar taught in Armenian schools in Constantinople, as well as courses in philosophy and literature. He also taught courses on getting rid of the Turkish yoke. Abdul Hamid links the problems in Sasun and Zeytun to Kiar's names, accusing him of spreading anti-Sultan and liberation propaganda among the Armenian people. The target of Kiar's speeches in the Armenian hating image of Abdul Hamid II, whom he considers the organizer of the Armenian massacres and called him a great murderer, a red beast, an imperial bandit, and monstrous beast in human form, his bloody majesty. Kiar, having enlisted in the struggle for the survival of the Armenian people, did not limit his activity to the publication of purely scientific works, but also conducted a prolific public speaking activity.
On September 24, 1981, the one operation took place. On that day, Martyr Yakeshishyan of the Suicide Commando of the Armenian Secret Liberation Army carried out the historic Operation One. Yakeshishyan was born in Tehran, author and organizer of several activities. In Tehran, on March 17, 1981, he was seriously wounded in a shootout. Contrary to the assurances of the Iranian side at the state level regarding the release of Yakeshishyan on September 7, 17 of the same year, Keshishyan was shot in the notorious Even Prison in Tehran. Barely a week later, on Thursday, September 24, Yahya Keshishyan's suicide squad seized the Turkish consulate in Paris, carrying out the historic one operation. Azerbaijani officials should be sanctioned while Washington is pressuring Baku to open the Berzer Corridor. According to Armen Press, such a statement was made by the Committee on Foreign Relations of the U.S. Senate. 150 days after Baku's blockade of Artsakh, it is clear that Aliyev is creating a humanitarian crisis and cutting of electricity to important infrastructure. Sanctions against senior Azerbaijani officials should be on the table while we push for the opening of the Berzer Corridor. The committee's Twitter page said. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee attached a message to the note saying that Nagorno-Karabakh has been under siege of five months. Gas and electricity cuts continue and the region's largest reservoir is running out of water, threatening to leave the region without a hydroelectric plant. Eastern Armenia, Iran and India are working on the project of International Transport Corridor, Persian Gulf Black Sea. The Indian side considers Armenia as a bridge, with the help of which goods from the India will be able to enter the multi-million market of the EEU. Speaking to Sputnik Armenia, the president of the Indian Trade and Economic Organization, Azif Iqbal, said the issue is being discussed at the level of the leaders of the three countries, but it is planned to involve the private sector in the project as well. In 2020, in 2024, India will become an observer country of the EEU. This is another circumstance to deepen cooperation with Armenia in all directions, including in the field of defense, Iqbal said, adding that in the near future an attaché for defense issue will be appointed at the Indian embassy in Armenia. In Yerevan, in the courtyard of the Moscow Cinema Carpets from the Carpet Museum of Shushi City and the works Artsakh Carpet are displayed. In the last days of the 40-40 day Artsakh war, days before the fall of the city of Shushi, the exhibit in the museum were evacuated, although not completely. Artsakh Carpets have been on display since February 20 in Yerevan at the National Museum Institute of Architecture named by after Alexander Tamanyan. The Shushi Museum was the only one in the world where the origin of all carpets samples is clear. There may be older and more valuable carpets in museums of other countries, but their origin is not clear. Because they were not acquired from the original source, they passed through several hands before appearing in the museum. The carpet collection belongs to Vartan Asatarian, a native of Artsakh, an economist lawyer by profession. Thanks to his initiative, the handmade carpets, which are the visiting card of Artsakh, have been preserved and presented to the world as Artsakh culture. The museum's permanent display of about three 300 carpets in the city of Shushi included 80 carpets that were saved. 70% of carpets were taken out. The precious book album Hayot Kashatakh, published by the Publishing Committee of the Holy See of Ejmiadzin, the result of almost 30 years of tireless work of the pedagogue journalist researcher Zohrab Yerkoyan was published. As the author of the book notes, the present-day Kashatakh region, the Armenian cradle, was depopulated in the years 1750 to 1920, some parts even in the years 1950 to 1980. As a result of the 1992 to 1993 Artsakh War of Existence, this territories were liberated and revitalization quickly began. It turned out that although the foreigners who took control of our country at that time destroyed the churches and tombs of many settlements, nevertheless, in the historical settlements, centuries old witnesses telling the history of the Armenians were preserved nearby. Monasteries, churches, chapels, cemeteries with stone crosses and tombstones, bridges, mills. There are also many graves and springs. There are also numerous pre-Christian tombs and settlements, fortresses and cave hermitages. The two-page historical overview of the book presents the Kashatakh world, which was strengthened from the beginning of the 15th century, especially thanks to Melik Haikazian dynasty, from antiquity bibliographic records, testimonies of historians to the present day. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song.
Thank <laughs> you.